All right, time for our next piece of notes. And today what we're going to talk about is a thing called conservation of energy. Now, earlier in the year, we talked about a thing called the conservation of mass uh, law. Right? And that one stated that matter can neither be created nor destroyed. All we can simply do is rearrange it. And that was when we did the balancing equations way back when. And the whole idea is whatever I start with in a reaction, I got to end up with the same stuff. But the whole idea is it's just going to be rearranged in a different order. Right? Um, so now we're going to do the same concept, but now we're going to do this with energy and say that whatever energy I start with, I got to have the same amount of energy at the end. What I can do is I can change its form. And in the notes the other day, we talked about some different types and those different types. There was mechanical, there was thermal, which is heat, there was radiant, which is light. Uh, let's see, there was nuclear, there was chemical. Um, so there, there is a whole bunch of different types of energy. And what we are going to look at today is we can take those types of energy and we can pick one type of energy and we can change it into another type of energy, right? And in doing that, I don't destroy energy. I don't create energy. It's all the same amount of energy. All I'm simply going to do is change its form to something else, right? So looking at the notes that you should have copied down already and sent me a picture of, is that number letter A says mechanical energy. Well, mechanical energy is really the total kinetic energy, which if you remember was energy of motion, things doing things, and all the potential energy, the possible energy that's inside that system added together. So it's how much energy there is actually moving and how much is stored away inside of it, okay? Um, that's all the mechanical energy of that object. So if we were looking at your phone that you, know, you have, um, if you're utilizing your phone, your phone is on that means it's it's got some kinetic energy because it's actually doing something but at the same time it's also got some potential energy which is your battery right so you're actually using your phone talking texting doing something right doing a tick tock or whatever right so you you have that energy you also have looking at your phone you're like oh my gosh i only got a half of a battery left right and i gotta get this thing done before that battery goes dead and i'm gonna have to charge it all back up so, so we have this total of the kinetic energy that you're using and the potential energy that the, the phone has. Now, as we all know, it's like, well, wait, Mr. Pete, the energy goes away because my phone's all of a sudden dead and I don't have no energy left. So it obviously destroyed it, got rid of it, did it. Now think about your phone. Have you ever noticed, what does your phone feel like when it's on? Well, you should notice a lot of times, sometimes it's actually warm. There's some heat to it. And that heat is where the energy is released as it turns into thermal energy. And then that thermal energy then goes floating away into the atmosphere and that's where we lose, okay, we lose the heat. It didn't get destroyed, it just changed into heat and then that heat is released into the atmosphere. So, so we, didn't, uh, we didn't destroy it, okay? But that total kinetic and potential energy, that's the mechanical energy of your phone that you have. All right, so letter B it says, think of a swing on a playground. We just talked about the idea of a cell phone. Let's think about the idea of a swing going. Rrr, 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 rrr. So if I have the swing, right? So here's the top of the swing, right? And here's the person sitting on the swing, right? And what they're gonna do is they're gonna swing all the way over to here. So we're gonna have point letter A, point B, point C, point D, and point E, okay? So when the swing, when the guy, the person is sitting up here in this point, Right? Is he really moving? No. There's a point where he comes up and goes, Rrr, and then he starts to come back down. So when he's up here, kind of like when we talked about in notes the other day and the whole idea of the top of the roller coaster, this spot over here has lots of potential energy. Right? So it's a great amount of potential energy, very little kinetic energy. Now where in this swing is going to be the spot where I have the greatest amount of kinetic energy? Where is he moving the most? Right down here. So this is the spot where you have the greatest kinetic energy at the very bottom, letter C. Now what's happening is it goes back up this side. It's starting to slow down, isn't it? It's going and then there's a certain point where it stops and then it comes back. So right over here, then all of a sudden we're gonna have great potential energy again. So it really goes potential, kinetic, potential, kinetic, potential, kinetic, potential, kinetic, potential. And it keeps going back and forth. What's occurring at B if we're going this way across? Well, the potential energy is going down, so we're decreasing potential energy, and we're increasing kinetic energy. 
And that's why he's, he's speeding up and he's losing his potential energy because he's changing into kinetic. And as it goes up on this other side, we're going to be increasing potential energy and we're going to be decreasing kinetic energy. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's really just switching back and forth right? Right. constantly. So, so that's what the, the notes say. It says high potential energy, low kinetic energy when at the top of the swing. So you got lots of potential energy, very low kinetic energy when you're up here at the top. Then when you're down here at the bottom, it's got low potential energy and high kinetic energy when you're at the bottom of the swing. That's when you're moving the fastest. Now, as we all know, when you got push somebody on the swing, do they swing forever? No. They ultimately slow down and stop. So, oh gosh, now here go Mr. Pape. He messed up again. The energy disappeared. He got destroyed. No, it didn't get destroyed. What's actually happening is this spot right up here. And that spot is hanging on the top of the, the swing structure. And have you ever like swam and it's going back and forth? Well, what's that squeaking sound? What is that? That is friction. And what does friction produce? It produces heat. So we end up with some heat that's produced and then that energy goes floating away. All right, so that's where the energy goes is to the friction. If you want the person, and I will tell you, having been a dad, all right, and you're out pushing your kids and you want to like push them and make them like go and not have to push them constantly like every single time to keep them going, I'll give you a piece of hint. Come up here to the top of this thing, put a little bit of oil on it. What does oil do? It decreases that friction. It makes it so that they'll swing longer, right? And they'll have more fun on the swing. And you also get rid of that, that irritating squeaking back and forth. Right? And squeak is actually the friction that's occurring. So, so that's number three there. It slows down because of friction where the rope is attached at the top. All right, let, let her see law of conservation of energy. That says energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only change forms. And that's really what we're doing here is we're just changing the form of the energy. Okay? Um, we're changing the, the energy down here, the mechanical energy of it swinging back and forth. We're going to change it ultimately into heat because of the friction. And then ultimately we're going to lose all the energy in the form of heat and it's going to go floating away. So I put down some examples. Number one, uh, food you eat is actually chemical potential energy. So when you go to lunch or you go to dinner, whatever time it is that you're watching this video, you eat that food, what your body is doing is it's storing that stuff up, storing energy, that's potential energy. You're storing that away. Now when you need it, you're going to change it from chemical energy into, let's say you need some heat because you're like cold or you got to keep your body temperature up. So you're going to take that chemical energy, you're going to break those bonds, get some energy out of it, and raise your body temperature so that you can keep it where it's supposed to be, and you turn it into thermal energy. Or you want to play some basketball, volleyball, you want to go run track, okay? All that means you got to like run, you got to have mechanical energy. So you're going to take that chemical energy, food, break those bonds. When you break those bonds, you can get that energy, and that makes it so now you can move your muscles and make it so that you can play the basketball, the volleyball, the baseball, the softball, run track, whatever it is that you're going to be doing. All right. So that's what it says there. Food you eat is actually chemical potential energy. And when you digest it, the food becomes heat, which is thermal kinetic energy. Uh, the food becomes mechanical energy, so you can move your legs. So all that's in the notes telling you about that, that those are the predominant things. Um, one thing that's really interesting for the amount of uh, food that we eat, 80% of the food that we eat, in other words, most all of the food we eat, is used to maintain our body temperature, to keep us at 98.6. Okay. Think of like a snake. If you have a snake at home, how often do you have to feed a snake? They don't get fed very often. Why? Well, they don't have to maintain their body temperature. They use the heat of the area around them, the sun shining down on them. That's what they use to keep their body temperature up. So they don't use their food to raise and keep their body temperature up. So they only need to eat about 20% of what we do. So they can eat once a week, once every couple weeks, once a month. Um, so they don't need very much energy, right? So if we had that, we'd be able to eat like we'd have lunch at school once a week. So it'd be, oh, it's Wednesday. Sweet, got lunch today. Whew, it's the only time we have lunch. The rest of the week, don't have lunch. But then also we'd have to have uh, class outside so that we could all sit outside and, and have the sun shine down on us so that we could stay warm and keep our body temperature up. Otherwise, we'd come inside, we'd be like, oh, man. I'm like getting really cold and starting to slow down because I don't have very much heat coming out of them. But instead, we utilize our food to keep that body temperature up. Now, the other one is uh, car burning gasoline. And I like to rewrite this 
in a little different way. And that is inside your car, you got the gas. All right, so up here you got the gasoline. That gas is actually a chemical potential energy. Mm -hmm. right. It's got the potential. If, you're, if you get inside your car, you're like, oh, sweet, I got a full tank of gas, man. I got a lot of potential to go do some stuff. Or you get in the car, you're like, oh, man, mom, you gave me the car on E. Well, I can't go driving around tonight because I don't have any gas. I don't have any potential to go do anything, man. So now we can burn that gas. That's really what your car does. And it becomes a few different things. Number one is it can become mechanical kinetic energy. And it makes the wheels go around. Right. We can also make it into thermal energy, and that is heat, that's thermal kinetic energy. And your car does produce a lot of heat, if you never checked it, um, after you get home today, after you go somewhere with your parents, go feel the top of the hood, and it'd be amazing how hot that hood is, and that's all the, the friction that's occurring inside your motor that's changing your gasoline chemical energy into heat, and we release lots of heat off of our cars. Another one we can get is we can get electrical energy, kinetic energy, and that's going to be like your radio. In order for you to run the radio in the car, you got to have electrical energy, and we produce electrical energy using a thing called an alternator inside your car. And then the final one that we end up with uh, is we can get we can make it into radiant energy, and that's like your lights. So we can run the headlights on the car, or the uh, running lights, right, or the lights on the inside of the car, or the dashboard lights, right. So all these things, what we're really doing is we're taking that chemical potential energy, the gasoline, and when we burn it, we get these four things, we change it into those, right. Now, which one makes me lose my energy? Uh, predominantly, it's this one. We predominantly lose it in the form of heat, right? and that's where it then goes floating off in the atmosphere, and we lose it, right. Uh, we do lose it on these other things, but that's the biggest one that, that eats up most all of our gasoline. So, all right, well, so you're going to want to make sure that you remember that because in hint, you might see that again, all right? Well, that finishes these notes. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.